I welcome you for the presentation, Digitalized Development Mythology for Continuous Vehicle Product Lifecycle. My name is Markus Christian. I'm Head of Product Management, Test and Validation at ETAS. My current main task is setting up a comprehensive portfolio for virtualization applications. The automotive industry is undergoing the biggest transformation it has ever experienced. Megatrends such as personalization, automated driving, connectivity and electrification are remodeling the vehicle of the future. Software is becoming more and more a key to future vehicle functionality. Up to 40% of the development costs of a vehicle fall on software. Software furthermore is the basis for making the car a living object receiving continuously updates and functional enhancements. Traditional development methods, which are geared solely toward long-term releases, are reaching their limits. Appropriate development methods support the key performance indicators for software development, like shorter lead time, more frequently deployment, faster mean time to restore, and less change failure rates. A key criterion for success is the use of efficient methods and tools that enable all development partners to work simultaneously. Furthermore, it is expected that the integration and testing of software versions takes place at any time. There is a tendency for tried and tested IT tools of the IT and consumer industry. One philosophy that is becoming increasingly important in this context is the DevOps approach. DevOps is a well-established, proven approach used in the IT industry. It fosters close collaboration between software development and IT operations. The automotive industry has spent several decades working with V-model-based development cycles. But this is changing now. Why? Two examples. First, for example, complex driver assistance systems can no longer be fully specified upfront. A second example is the more and more upcoming need of regular and frequent updates and functional enhancements. Due to limits in regard to lead time, this cannot be achieved by a traditional V-model approach. State-of-the-art tools have to enable shorter, continuous, iterative and incremental development and deployment cycles. These must include fully integrated verification testing and release, and be closely linked to actual product use and the users. A high degree of automation is essential in this context. The appropriate solution for this is the automotive DevOps cycle, which was specially designed for automotive requirements. The DevOps cycle consists of a development and operational cycle. For verification, mainly the development side is used. For validation, mainly the operational side. The artifacts, the documents and also the activities described in the VE model retain their relevance. But the way they are handled is fundamentally transformed. In comparison to the V model, the DevOps cycle includes further steps and phases, like deploy, operate and monitor. These enable, for example, tasks like updating of systems in the field and systematic field observations. Also, data collection, continuous system validation and comparing the system with its environment are also fundamental parts. The connection between the development and operation aspects is established through data and models in an appropriate back-end infrastructure. And this is where the digital twins of the real components and artifacts are located. At this point, I want to introduce Thomas Huber. He is the head of Center of Competence of Software Verification and Validation at Bosch. Thomas, can you explain an automotive DevOps cycle in detail? Markers, with pleasure. So let's start with the development part of the DevOps cycle. The core of it is the virtualization and the software in the loop concept. Development cycles are getting shorter, 
regular software updates after SOP are required, the system complexity is constantly increasing and the integration efforts seem to explode. These challenges can be met by using virtual SIL environments and this is how it works. Compared to hill-based test systems, like you can see in the first line, a SIL environment that you can see in the second line allows all the processes to run continuously right from the start. The build process becomes much more powerful and includes the assembly of all the necessary SIL components like plant models, virtual ECUs, the virtual EE architectures and also the SIL tooling itself. This whole setup automates the integration process and allows it to take place much earlier so we have a significant front loading. SIL testing opens up new possibilities for test scaling, acceleration through front loading, targeted activation of specific test cases and broader and deeper test penetration. So the key benefits of SIL environments are that you have executable, integrated states of your software and your system available at any time. You have significant acceleration of your development cycles and you have major cost savings. On the other hand, there are some key prerequisites for the successful application of SIL. One is you need to have a high degree of automation of the entire tool chain. Then second, you need to have standardized SIL interfaces in order to be able to combine the different SIL components from different sources. And last but not least, in order to enable virtual software releases, you need to have all SIL components qualified. Let's now have a closer look into the topic of the virtual integration. Virtualization of ECUs is now being seen throughout the market. Additionally, OEMs are now launching projects that aim to virtualize all the ECUs in an entire vehicle EE network for the purpose of a fully virtual system integration on vehicle level. Virtualization platforms are being developed that offer access to the suppliers, enabling them to test their software versions in a continuous basis. This makes globally connected, synchronized work across all time zones a reality. These virtual vehicle platforms are characterized by three key features. One is complete virtualization of the bus communication. Second is the ability to integrate a wide variety of tools enabled by a modular architecture and open standards like FMI, FMU or ASAM XIL. And third is the scalability. What does scalability mean? We have requirements for up to 1000 concurrent users. There's a high scaling of verification and validation by running test cases faster than in real time. We have a simulation of all ECUs, typically 80 ECUs of a vehicle in a virtual form. And there's a support for different and distributed targets like desktop PCs, on-prem computer or cloud platforms. And last but not least, there's a parallelization of up to 1000 simulations and the whole thing runs cloud and service based. Now we are coming to the operation part of the automotive DevOps cycle. There are two major subparts of it. One is the collection of field data and the other one is the field based validation. A dedicated data collection method from the field of edge computing is smart data acquisition, which relies on in-vehicle filtering of the relevant data 
using validation monitors. Only the relevant data is transferred from the vehicle to the backend. Second major part is continuous validation. The models and assumptions used in development are continuously compared with reality and refined accordingly. For example, the environmental model can be compared with the physical environment itself, thereby allowing changes to be identified and channeled back into the model at any time. So what processes and methods does this involve? And what kind of tools does it require? One example is the field-based validation app with a trigger framework as core component. The trigger framework provides a flexible environment where the events that are to be recorded can be programmed in a secure sandbox. Either previously unrecorded or unfamiliar scenarios like an electric scooter as a new mode of transport. A different behavior of a component compared to its model. Refuting assumptions or changes to highway infrastructure. The communication interface to the backend copies the data captured by the trigger into the backend using the available in-vehicle and out-of-vehicle communication channels. As we now have seen the concept of development and the concept of operation, somehow these two must be interlinked. Now the question is, how does this work? The joining of the two cycles is essentially achieved through virtualization and digital twins of the real objects, data that links the two worlds, so data from the field on the one side and data from the virtual world on the other side. It is also achieved by comparing the models with reality and refining and updating them accordingly. This is related to the plant models, to the environment models, or for example, for the driver models. The joining is achieved by the very important cloud-based automotive DevOps IT backend. Now let's come to an example how the two worlds are interlinked and how development are and operations are interlinked. So we can see here a test drive in reality. So we collect sensor data, video data from the vehicle. And this is then an input for the reconstructor. What does the reconstructor do? The reconstructor transfers this kind of data into files that can be used in the simulation environment, in the virtual environment. Then we can have test drives in simulation with the similar and same scenarios. We can vary this kind of scenarios by varying different parameters like weather conditions, road conditions, lightning conditions or adding additional objects, vehicles and pedestrians. By this we get a deeper and broader testing and we can perform the scaling of verification and validation. The output of it is the list of verified scenarios. This then, again, is an input for the trigger framework that is in the system, in the vehicle. And it looks thereby for new scenarios that have not been verified so far, that have not been detected so far, and once such a new scenario has been detected, there's a trigger and this scenario is captured and sent to the backend. Once it is in the backend, it can be analyzed there. The feature that is in the vehicle can be improved and an updated feature can be downloaded to 
the test vehicle and then the test drives in reality can be repeated and again can be validated via vehicle measurements. So with this example you can see it's a continuous cycle between development and operations. As we have seen in this example, tools obviously play an important role in the automotive DevOps cycle. So, Markus, are there more tools available for such an automotive DevOps cycle? Thomas, I agree that tools are a crucial part of a high-performing DevOps cycle and Bosch together with its daughter company ETAS provides a comprehensive tool portfolio. To run the DevOps efficiently, all tools and phases must be highly automated and run hand in hand. Along the DevOps cycle, I will explain some selected tools. I will start with the physical world. Many of the tools within the operation cycle are highly domain specific and are augmented by new use cases in the mobility environment. Updates of single ECUs or complete e-architectures are carried out via OTA, that means over the air services within the phase deploy. In the phase operation, two main focus tasks are in place. The collection of field data and field-based validation. For the collection of field data, the ETAS tool INCA is used for diagnosis and measurements. This is possible for virtual as well as for real setup. The field-based validation app enables the vehicle to improve functions with data acquisition and validation in a safe real-time environment in the field. The tool trigger framework was explained already in a previous example. In the phase monitoring and plan, the transition takes place from the real to the virtual world. That means from the operation to the development cycle. Within these both phases, the digital twin is constantly being updated based on new observations in the real world and being recorded in the IT backend. Also models are being updated here. This takes place on the one hand via the reconstructor, which provides the updated digital twin to the development phase. Another tool which could be used is the ETAS ASCMO, which is used for data-based modeling and model-based application with a small amount of measurements. In the next phase, code, based on derived models, the software code is generated and reviewed. Three software tools are utilized. The ETAS ASCIT, which enables the development of easy to maintain, secure embedded software with high performance. And the ETAS CODE, which creates model-based, structured and easy to understand solutions for ECU software that can be automatically verified. Or the ETAS ISOLA product family, which provides tools for designing and testing embedded software. Within the next phase, the phase build, the assembly of the necessary ZIL components takes place. One specific version of ETAS Isola Eve comes into account for the build process of the virtual control unit, which are compliant with AutoSAR standards. In the phase testing, the tool ETAS COSM comes into the play with a complete system setup. COSM supports the continuous integration of the ZIL and associated components, such as virtual ECUs and plant models, and can be easily coupled to the automation frameworks, such as Jenkins. For the scalability up to 1,000 parallel co-simulations, ETAS Cloud Services provide an extension to COSM and can be efficiently integrated into existing development environments. The release of the software takes place with the Qualification Toolkit, which enables the release of all relevant SIL components and the specific software and system versions. At this point, the cycle is now closed and we go back to the real world. But the journey isn't finished here. The portfolio is constantly being expanded with new functions and solutions and grows with further technical progress. So now 
I'm coming to the summary and the outlook. Thanks to new development approaches and the use of DevOps in combination with virtualization, previously unthinkable opportunities are opening up in the automotive industry and environment. In particular, virtualization and learning systems enable real-time modeling of the vehicle and the processes that run in the control systems. Closing the loop between the development and operation cycle provides the basis for enabling in vehicle solutions to become increasingly intelligent. Through this, the vehicle learns to adapt to new environments very quickly and constantly. This enables user-related services and highly automated driving and a big amount of new business opportunities. With sophisticated tools, Bosch with its daughter company ETAS are pushing to integrate the automotive into the IoT world. By this, the conditions are now in place for a smartphone on wheels. Thank you for your attention. Thomas Huber and me are now looking forward for your questions.